negotiator at the Bonn conference was asked by the Philippines what New Zealand expected from other countries, New Zealand answered that we expected other developed countries would reduce their emissions by 30 to 40 per cent. The Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Uh, the member is incorrect. I've read the transcript of exactly what was said by a climate change ambassador. What he said, and it is quite correct, is that a 10 to 20 per cent range for New Zealand, given our unique circumstances around 50 per cent of our emissions coming from agriculture, and the fact that we are starting from 24 per cent behind with the growth in emissions, it means that a comparable economic amount and an economic impact would be for other countries to take those targets. But can I make very plain, New Zealand's target is not conditional on those other countries making targets in the range that the member suggests. Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the minister agree, in light of his answer just now, which effectively says that New Zealand is in a unique position on climate change, does he agree that our grossly inefficient vehicle fleet gives us a unique opportunity to reduce energy emissions in a cost-effective way, as outlined in the Green Party's plan released just two weeks ago? Honourable Dr Nick Smith. Mr Speaker, uh, the Government has a broad range of policies to address the challenge of climate change. Only earlier today, my colleague Jerry Brownlee was talking about the home insulation package. We've got legislation that's just been passed to provide incentives uh, for electric cars. Uh, as we speak, I know the Select Committee that's done the review on the ETS is nearing the end of its work, and it is my ambition to have ETS policy settled by the time of the Copenhagen Conference. There is important work being done on agricultural emissions. There are important investments being made in public transport. There are many initiatives that the government has got to reduce emissions and to meet the international obligations that we propose. Hekia Parata. Hekia Parata. To the Minister, has the Minister received any advice as to the international response to our 2020 target? The Honourable Dr. Dr. Nick Speaker, uh, yes, I am advised by our climate change ambassador uh, that New Zealand's announcement of the 10 to 20 per cent reduction below 1990 levels was very well received, including positive comments from Australia, from the European Union, specifically from Denmark and from the United States. I note particularly the Pew Centre, which is well respected for its international work around climate change, congratulated New Zealand and said that we had set a very ambitious target given our national circumstance. Supplementary. Dr. Dr Kennedy Graham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Minister agree that while New Zealand is in a unique position with regard to its agriculture in climate change, that we are also, with our huge indigenous and plantation forestry assets, in a unique opportunity to sequester carbon, as outlined in the Green Party's plan. Uh, Mr. The Speaker, Honourable Dr. Nick Smith. I think it's important in the debate around forestry and climate change to recognise that forestry buys us time rather than actually providing a long term solution. That is, while right now uh, our huge increase in emissions is being offset by the trees that were planted in the 1990s. When those trees become of harvestable age in the 2020s, New Zealand's climate change is quite difficult. So yes, forestry has a role to play. We should not overstate it because it simply buys us time. To the minister, did the minister or his associate recommend a more ambitious target to cabinet? The Honourable Dr. Uh, Mr. Nick Smith. Speaker, uh, today I've released the cabinet papers associated with the decisions uh, that the cabinet took around a climate change goal. Myself and my associate Tim Grosser uh, did recommend a slightly tougher target, a 12 to 20 range. Uh, the cabinet paper shows that Treasury actually recommended a far more conservative uh, target range. And so the Cabinet made a decision uh, to reduce that, that lower target range, uh, a decision that I think that was quite appropriate. Point of, Doctor, order. Point of order, Dr Russell uh, Norman. Point of order, Mr Speaker. The, order, point of order has been called. Uh, the Minister said that he had read the transcript from the meeting and then proceeded to quote the statements from the New Zealand ambassador in that transcript. So, that, to me, is reading from an official document. And if the minister is quoting from the New Zealand ambassador from the transcript to the meeting, then he should table that document. That's an official document. Order, order. I, I, I was watching the minister very carefully in your answer. I believed he referred 
to what the ambassador had said, but I didn't see him in any way holding a document up from which he was quoting. He was going from memory of what the ambassador said. Now, under, under those circumstances, I don't believe the minister can be asked to table the document. Supplementary. Uh, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Is the minister then saying, based on his answers to the earlier questions, that it doesn't matter if the developed countries in the world actually collectively do reach a 25 to 40 per cent reduction, which is, as the IPCC says, the only way we can, we can you know, keep it under two degrees of warming? And if he is saying that, how is that consistent with the New Zealand statement that was put at the conference that says we will only make 10 to 20 per cent if we keep it under two degrees? Honourable Dr Nick Mr Smith. Speaker, the member misquotes what the International Panel on Climate Change, the scientists, have said. It is absolutely proper that the scientists advise governments, including this government, as to what is the reduction in emissions that's required to avert dangerous climate change. But it's not for scientists to be able to assess what is the fair allocation of emissions reduction between different countries. That is very much a socio-political debate, not a scientific debate. Question, oh, big, uh, question 